Think of it as like sunglasses before your camera. Now, ND filters come in two types. You have what I like to call static ND filters, which is like it has one ND level. This is an ND8 filter. And then you also have a variable ND filter where this is a two to five ND filter, and this is a six to nine ND filter. The ones that are just one specific ND are usually really good as far as like quality is concerned because you won't have the risk of having artifacts in your in your photos. So when you spin these filters, our ND filters, like the variable ones, you can have one part of your image be darker than the other part of your image because of the moving component of this. Sometimes it can cause giant black X's in the middle of your image, or you can have parts of your image that are underexposed or overexposed. Those kinds of issues usually go away when you buy a higher quality filter, but if you're going on the cheaper side, you're gonna probably run into that more often. And then to avoid that, you can get ones that are just one specific ND level, and then you can just buy multiple of them if you really wanted to. And these are very specific use cases that you wanna use it for. In still photography, it's when you want to caption motion. So if you are shooting a picture of a waterfall, the ocean side, or maybe a river, and you want to get the blurry effect of the water moving, you have to decrease your shutter speed significantly. And when you do that, it causes your image to be overexposed. And that is why you would use an ND filter because you can cut down your shutter speed significantly and use the ND filter to control the amount of light coming into your image. So that way it's not overexposed and you still get the very specific motion that you're trying to capture. So if you're shooting at one second, three second, minutes worth of exposure time, an ND filter is gonna be used for that. In my use case, when I'm shooting motorsports, I am going to be using an ND filter to get more motion blur. So as I'm panning and shooting at a car, I want to have more motion blur. And so that means I'm gonna change my shutter speed to be lower, but that's going to overexpose my image. So I am either gonna crank up my aperture or I'm going to use a filter like this, so that way I don't have to rely on my aperture. I can control it with this.